First time since the 2018 season in Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones making some big news during a morning pre-show game. For more of what's on Instant Replay tonight, here's Larry Ramirez. And Jerry Jones was smiling pretty much yeah. the whole time. You could just tell he wanted to say what he said. Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson's rocky relationship appears to be in the rear view. Now they're getting along coming up tonight on Instant Replay. December the 30th of 1923, you're going in the Dallas Cowboy Ring. Yeah. Well, I, I hope it's 2023. I hope it's 2023. <laughs> what did I say? 2023. Wow. Well, it is 2023. That is correct. 2023. That happened this morning before the Cowboys played the Panthers. Jerry Jones is going to induct Jimmy Johnson into the Cowboys Ring of Honor. Many feel it's about time coming 30 years after Jimmy led the boys to back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles. And to make things better, Dak led Dallas to an easy win this afternoon. Singletary came in motion on second down middle of the field. Deflected! C.J. Straub was picked off three times today for the first time in his football career. I'm talking high school, college, and now the pros. I mean, that's an impressive streak, and somehow the Texans were able to overcome those mistakes to win their third straight game. Davenport has a great community. Garden Ridge has a great community. And the moment we won, my phone was blowing up of, which time are y'all going to get back so we can come greet y'all? We were there last night as Davenport High School at Davenport High School to welcome the state championship volleyball team back to town. They got a hero's welcome after winning the 4A state title in a very tough five set match. Mary Rominger will have more with the champs. Plus, we've got college football with UTSA, UIW, Texas, Texas A&M. And who would you want as the Spurs starting point guard? That's our poll question tonight. That and much more coming up on Instant Replay. Lots to talk about. We'll see you as usual. Bit. Thank you, Larry. And we'll see you right after this. Day after day, we cover shootings across our city. But if you look at the data on the San Antonio Police Department's website, which shows crimes against people, it shows that violent crimes are actually down this year compared to last. But that's not how it seems to first responders. They let KSAT investigates Lee Waldman ride along for a glimpse of what they see every day. <laughs> The whole purpose of kind of my job is we make all the high acuity calls that are out there. We supply all the ambulances, make sure that they have everything that they need. San Antonio Fire Department Medic Officer Joshua Frenson is prepared. So this is a blood warmer that was designed by some of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. For all situations he or other EMS crews might face. Once this scans on here, and you see how I can see all that and follow that all the way up and it shows me exactly where to start. As of late, that's been more and more calls for violence. The last 24 months, I've never seen anything like it. Without a doubt, we are making more shootings than we've ever made. San Antonio Police Department posts data provided by the National Incident-Based Reporting System on its website. It shows assaults have dropped nearly 11% from 2022 to 2023 between the months of January and September. Murders during the same period have also dropped by almost 40%, though last year's data is skewed due to the June 2022 deaths of 53 people in a tractor trailer. I don't know where they're getting that data because it's definitely not what we're seeing or feeling on the streets. And I feel 100% confident you could ask anybody who's out here, they'll, they'll say the same thing. KSAT investigates rode along for two nights to see for ourselves. The information is still coming in. We won't roll in on this scene until PD's secured it for us. Night one was quiet, though Franson did assist in responding to a car inside of a home. But night two, a different story. It came in as possible shots fired. Um, sounds like, looks like we got an individual who's been shot in the head. The second call was a domestic violence call. Branson says they see those every day. It's malignancy on your soul. Right when we got to the scene, Franson went inside a home. PD was still taping off the area. He was back in a moment, grabbing surgical supplies and the mobile ultrasound to find a heartbeat 
for the victim. We did some finger thoracotomies, had some chest trauma, so we ended up opening up the chest because we were positively ventilating for him. Unfortunately, the victim didn't survive. And we'll turn the scene over to PD and let PD handle it from here. Research is happening now with SAPD and UTSA on ways to cut down on crime, but no one seems to have an answer as to why it's happening. I do know that we see more and more people that are here that's involved in this have previous criminal records. They have outstanding warrants. They're being arrested and released. All Franson and the rest of SAFD can do is promise to respond and try to save lives. There hasn't been an emergency in the history of the San Antonio Fire Department that we haven't solved. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Lee Waldman. The San Antonio Fire Department has peer-to-peer -peer support as well as psychologists and critical incident stress debriefs after responding to traumatic events in order to care for crews' mental health and to combat burnout. You can watch the story again and part one of our EMS Ride Along series by heading to KSAT.com or our KSAT YouTube page. Meanwhile, tonight, four people and a gunman are dead after an overnight shooting spree in Memphis, Tennessee. Mavis Christian Jr. shot and killed a 13-year-old girl and apparently three other women in a series of shootings across Tennessee last night. A 15-year-old girl was also taken to the hospital in connection to the violence. It all started around 9 o'clock Saturday, according to authorities, when officers responded to one shooting and later realized it was connected to two other shootings involving Christian. A major manhunt ensued and police found him dead inside a getaway car after an hours long search. Tonight, a motive still under investigation. And now to Florida, where a missing woman's body was found inside a storage unit and police there say her estranged husband may be responsible. Police in Winter Springs, just outside Orlando, say they found her body yesterday, about a week after her family says she disappeared. Police say the storage unit belongs to her estranged husband, who is now the prime suspect in the case. He was already in police custody at the time of their discovery yesterday, charged with attempted murder in a previous incident. Los Angeles police looking for this person of interest who they say they believe started a massive fire on I-10 there last weekend. That fire shutting down parts of the freeway and created a traffic nightmare for the more than 300,000 people who use that road every day. Crews have been working around the clock to reopen that section of interstate, and it officially reopened for drivers tonight. In your health news now, flu cases are spiking in several states right as the holidays are about to kick into full gear. ABC's Rena Roy has the numbers and ways that you can stay safe. Health officials anticipating the spread of viruses as people start to gather for Thanksgiving amid a rise in flu-like illnesses. We're very concerned about super spreader events, people coming together, mixing, and then bringing their illness home. Seven states plus D.C. and Puerto Rico experiencing high or very high levels of respiratory illness activity. The CDC estimating from October until last week, there were at least 780,000 flu illnesses and nearly 500 deaths. For those that are youngest, those who are oldest, those who have underlying conditions, the flu infection can be especially deadly. Seven-year-old Kalia Burgess of Columbus, Georgia, recently dying after coming down with the flu. She was saying, like, I can't breathe, like, I can't breathe. They got here really fast, but honestly, before they got here, I just... You know, she had already lived. And while officials say so far flu hospitalizations have remained lower than this time last year, emergency rooms are bracing for what could be another triple demic season of RSV, flu, and COVID. All right, switching gears and heading back outside with live cam back here at home tonight. Temperatures still in the mid 60s, and I really don't anticipate those temperatures to fall a whole lot more through the overnight hours and by wake up time tomorrow morning, just because we've got the cloud cover in place and yes, still some fog out there as well. Here's a look at the almanac data for today. We actually managed to dip down into the upper 50s before some of that fog and mist settled in earlier this morning, but of course, the the cloud cover holding those afternoon highs to the upper 60s, which is actually slightly below average for this time of year here in San Antonio, where we did find a few more peaks of sunshine, especially south of the Highway 90 corridor. 
we were able to see those temperatures climb into the low to mid 70s. It was 73 in Carrizo Springs and Del Rio, 76 in Catula, low to mid 60s though, up into the hill country. Warmer tomorrow, upper 70s expected as we see some drier air work in behind that front. Then the cooler air works in as well, low 60s all the way through Thanksgiving, and that will continue into next weekend. So once again, we'll talk about all of the differing factors that we'll be monitoring leading up to Turkey Day coming up a little bit later on, Courtney. All right, thank you, Mia. Well, it's a message straight from the San Antonio airport about how to avoid a holiday travel headache. That's next on the night beat. Well, get ready. Thanksgiving travel is expected to break records. The San Antonio airport says traffic will be up for about the next week. Yeah, the night team is Daniela Ibarra went to the airport recently and has a couple ideas on how you can plan ahead. Figuring out how to get to the airport is one of the biggest travel headaches. So we're expecting a lot of travelers. We're expecting a lot of parking operations to continue. So we have a clear message for our travelers. It's plan ahead. Ryan Rocha with the San Antonio Airport says you need to get there two hours before your boarding time. There's a lot of different options like being dropped off by family, friends, or a ride share. The San Antonio Airport expects lots of people to drive themselves. This is the red lot. It's one of the airport's economy overflow lots. While it's empty now, in just a couple of days, the airport expects this place to be packed. Now, once you park your car and pay $10 a day, all you need to do is wait for a shuttle to get you to the actual airport. And this is where the shuttle either picks you up or drops you off. It's right outside the gate for Terminal B. And if you want something a little closer, you can also use the valet service. It's $33 a day and can be booked online. You fill out this form, it has your name, phone number, email, when you're leaving, um, what time you're leaving, when you're coming back. The airport says by planning ahead, it'll make your trip from your car here to the gate way less stressful. Reporting at the San Antonio Airport, Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, we know it's going to clear up and the sun's going to come out, but Mia, it was nice and foggy and misty today. It certainly was, and I feel like, depending on which way you want to look at it, some people were so excited because you could just hang out inside, yeah. put your favorite holiday movie on, maybe get ready for all those Thanksgiving recipes. Some folks, not so much, especially when it came to outdoor weekend plans. Take a look at some of these photos we got into KSAT Connect. This is from our friend Skywatcher. It's a yucky, no good day outside. Not a fan giving it one out of five stars. It definitely was very damp out there. And then here's another one from Lance in South Bear County. Foggy and drizzly. That was just generally the scene outside here in the Alamo City. And right now, here's the latest on visibility. We are still dealing with that patchy fog and mist, some of which is very dense in spots. New Braunfels up to about half of a mile in visibility, still not good. Definitely take it easy up on I-35 if you know anybody that's traveling that way tonight or very early tomorrow morning. Same out west down Highway 90 and around Bear County, we are still dealing with that as well. So I think through the overnight hours tonight, we actually have the potential to see some of these pockets of fog get a little bit thicker and dense up a bit. So first thing tomorrow morning, do plan on giving yourself some extra time out the door and take it safe out there on the roadways. Notice by 9 a.m. still dealing with some of that fog and mist, but as we start to see that cold front work its way into the area into the early afternoon, that's going to dissipate. We're actually going to see more sunshine into the early afternoon as well. So speaking of that cold front, here's where it is right now up to our north, it's already cleared portions of the Texas Panhandle. You can see the parent area of low pressure associated with it, sparking widespread rain and storms into the upper Midwest and Central Plains. Watch what's going to happen here over the next 24 hours. So tomorrow morning, just an isolated chance for a shower here in our neck of the woods, especially the farther east you go and east of San Antonio. But as we head into Monday evening and Monday night, actually some severe weather is expected across far east Texas and into portions of the south central Louisiana stretching over to even Jackson, Mississippi. A three out of five risk for severe weather in place. Strong winds, a few tornadoes and even large hail is possible as that front continues to progress farther eastward. Again, we are not expecting anything like that here in south central Texas, but do be prepared for some patchy fog tomorrow morning, mid 60s and just that stray chance for a 
quick shower east of the Alamo City. We'll see that front move in into the early afternoon. The dry air comes first. So when you combine that with the sunshine returning, we are warming into the upper 70s. Then we start to see the cooler part of that air move in into the evening hours and especially by Monday night. Winds will start to pick up and I want to mention the winds again by 7 p.m. tomorrow. Winds are back in from the north already gusting upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour overnight Tuesday or Monday I should say and then into Tuesday morning wind gusts upwards of 35 miles per hour do look to be possible then we'll start to see those winds subside just a little bit by Tuesday night and especially into Wednesday morning but know that you're definitely going to notice that by tomorrow night notice your temperatures again a little bit cooler on Tuesday as well only topping off in the low 60s it's going to be cold by Wednesday morning and into Thanksgiving Day the morning there as well mid 40s before we rebound back into the low 60s there too that 20 percent potential for an isolated shower or two not ruled out on Thanksgiving Day especially in the morning all depending on where this area of low pressure tracks again if it takes more of a southerly track closer to the Gulf Coast that means we'll see more sunshine lower rain chances but if it decides to move farther inland that's when we'll see more cloud cover on Thursday and a higher rain chance. So right now we've got it at about a 20% potential subject to change. Definitely check back in with us here over the next several days as we fine tune the details. It is going to be cold Thursday morning as we mentioned a little bit earlier. So you will want the coats and you're still going to want the extra layer into the afternoon with forecast highs in the 60s. And honestly that trend looks to continue throughout the rest of the week and even into next weekend as well. You know what's missing? The twerking what? turkey. <laughs> I thought about it. What? I really did. I we remember we had this conversation turkey. last year. No, no twerking turkey. Maybe, maybe, maybe later this week. I was going to say, maybe ask Adam if he can do that tomorrow. Oh, he obviously will. <laughs> Thanks, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> A prequel and threequel hit theaters this weekend along with a holiday horror flick for some reason. Where did that leave the latest Marvel movie? The early estimates for this weekend's box office results next on the night. Twerking turkeys or twerking trolls? <laughs> Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Five Nights at Freddy's fell to fifth place on ticket sales of three and a half million dollars. Horror fans gave thanks for Thanksgiving. The holiday slasher flick debuted in a tie for third place with $10.2 million. Also earning $10.2 million, The Marvels, which fell 78% in its sophomore weekend. My girls like candy, a candy treat. She knocks me right up off my feet. Trolls Band Together opened in second place. The third movie in the animated musical franchise took in $30.6 million. Sing your way out of this one, Lucy Gray. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, debuted on top, earning $44 million. By far the weakest opening of the franchise, but easily enough to win the weekend. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Even with a unicorn on their roster in Victor Wembanyama, it's not all fun and games for the Spurs right now. And Frank Harris was on fire in his last regular season home game at the Alamo. Dome for a preview of what's on instant replay tonight. Here's Larry Ramirez. I'll tell he's you, so pumped. right? He showed out yeah. big time in his last regular season game at the Alamo Dome. It was senior night at the Dome yesterday, and Frank Harris made sure all the seniors, including himself, went home happy. Coming up tonight on instant replay. I just give credit to God. Um, I just feel like he, he wanted me to play my last game at Alamo Dome and uh, go out that way. And it couldn't have been any better for me. And uh, God gets all the credit for that. Um, I just, I, I really don't even know what else to say. Senior QB Frank Harris carried the Roadrunners office with 523 total yards and six touchdowns to lead UTSA past South Florida 49-21. Now the Roadrunners are prepped for a big showdown with Tulane. Man, you know, it's always a great game when two great teams come at it. And you know what, this was just a slugfest, a heavyweight matchup, man taking punch after punch and, and you know I feel like it was just a great game man. 
Lavernia beat Bernie Friday night, advancing to the third round of the high school football playoffs. The Greyhounds entered the game as the number one 4A D1 team in Texas, and because of them losing, we've got some movement in a brand new edition of 12's Top 12. Plus, we've got the best of BGC, the Cowboys and Texans win. Jerry will put Jimmy in the ring of honor. Davenport Volleyball wins state, and the Spurs are struggling. All that and much more right after the night beats. Jimmy's hair looks better than Jerry's, so he's got that going for him. <laughs> Jimmy's hair always looks great. Yes, he does. Better <laughs> than a lot of people. <laughs> we'll be right back.